Hello, I'm Giovanni, I come from Italy, and I work for ETT. ETT is an Italian company that uh, actually designs and develops interactive installations for uh, museums. And uh, for ETT, I'm uh, responsible for the AR developments as well as for the, uh, most recently, for the VR aspects also. And in the latest, in the last years, we've learned a lot about museums. We've worked with a lot of them, and we uh, discovered how VR and AR can be technologies that can be effectively used in museums to create engagement and uh, awareness without being a distraction. Because museums um, changed during the centuries, and they passed through many stages and phases, but basically, uh, they evolved by opening to a wider and uh, more diversified audience. And uh, we don't have to uh, forget that uh, museums are often the forefront of the adoption of many innovative technologies. If I look back, the first time I actually used a touch screen, it had been inside a museum a long time ago. And still nowadays, many, many, many people have their first encounters with uh, uh, augmented reality and with virtual reality inside a museum. And even if these, the advent of multimedia technologies and um, slightly changed the, mostly the expectations of the public, the basic museum user experience remains a discovery and uh, exploration. But uh, museums can be a really tough environment for technologies because they have to be robust in terms of hardware and uh, the interactions have to be uh, good designed because uh, the flows of people can be really intense and uh, the, ex the experience that you deliver have to be usable by the wider variety of uh, visitors you, you can possibly imagine. And uh, so the contents have to be consistent and the user experience have to be wisely designed. Otherwise, they get simply ignored because we know that Working with alternative realities, we can, um, we can uh, develop experiences that can be so intense and absorbing that one can almost forget about reality. But uh, in museum, museum can be considered special places in which reality is a bit stronger because it's like as they can be considered spaces in which uh, the best pieces uh, of reality had been collected in one single place for you to be experienced in first person. So, for example, we collaborated with the Genoa Aquarium, that is one of the biggest in the whole Europe, and uh, we observed that uh, you can put the, the most uh, innovative, engaging VR, AR, multi-touch uh, interactive experience beside the fish tank, and uh, luckily, the kids will go for the real animals. But you can effectively use, for example, technologies like VR to show what wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be um, hosted in, in um, couldn't be hosted in other ways in, inside a, in a, an aquarium, like the Abyss Wildlife that is presented through this uh, VR uh, installation that we developed uh, in Genoa. But let's step back to augmented reality. Augmented reality soon revealed to be a really strong opportunity for museums because it, allow, it allows to build experiences that um, keep a strong relation with the objects that are observed. I promise this will be the only bullet point uh, slide in my whole presentation, but um, these are, there are some basic rules uh, design rules that can be followed when uh, developing an AR application. And uh, these are the three laws of AR by Lex Ardes, and they are still very valuable, even if the hardware ecosystem is changing fast. And the first one says that augmentation, the augmented content, must emerge from the real world and be strongly related to it. The augmented content must not, must not distract from reality, but rather make you more aware of it. And third, you, you have to try to use augmented, augmented reality just to do stuff that can't be done with other uh, technologies. 
And what I will show you now is a collection of uh, experiments and uh, actual applications that we developed for museums around Europe. And uh, I, we will try to test them against these th three uh, laws. And you will see how um, respecting these three laws in a museum is somehow easier than in other environment. And you will understand why. In this experimental application, we use uh, augmented reality to explain painted perspective in a fresco from the Renaissance. In this uh, masterpiece from Masaccio, uh, the, um, the mastering the complex geometrical principle leads to a beautiful illusion of depth that is the first of its kind in history of art. And uh, um, tracking the fresco with an augmented reality application, the user gets notified when he's standing in the correct observation point. And from that position, an animation sequence show how the um, perspective is geometrically constructed. And having the possibility of moving back and forth and left and right, and so actually playing with the parallax, um, tells you in the most intuitive way how the relation between painted, uh, uh, the subtle relation between squares and triangle lead to a construction of a three-dimensional space and uh, lead to the illusion of depth and of a cubic <coughs> volume that hosts the painted characters. As, as, as you can see, this could be achieved only through augmented reality, and the relation with, uh, with the fresco is really strong. And after you put away your uh, device, the memory of what you experienced um, is uh, highly persistent. And in this other um, experiment that I developed for a, for a, um, for a um, scientist that actually analyzes paintings, we, we provided a tool to browse through these huge multi-spectral multi imagery databases in an intuitive and uh, playful way. And uh, what we discovered is that working with professionals and understanding their needs, uh, we get really precious design hints for uh, uh, applications that then, then can go with a slight downgrade to the general public. For example, from, from the, from the multispectral experiment you saw before, we developed an application that is, that is actually, we, we developed it in uh, collaboration with Samsung, and it's actually available for the public uh, of the Galleria dell'Accademia Museum in Venice. And uh, through the same principle, you can discover how after a restoration, the baby Jesus uh, lost all his hairs, and how, uh, the, um, how the artist uh, almost changed his mind almost three times before finding the right position of the subject's uh, uh, head. And uh, in the same museum, we use the really basic augmented reality feature, simple image recognition, to engage uh, young visitors in a treasure hunt. And it was surprising how um, the, the visitors are giving uh, uh, a question while entering a room. And it was surprising how uh, the, um, the visitors kept, uh, uh, started observing and spent all their time inside the room observing the real, uh, the actual painting. And then they simply used the, the devices just to verify the, uh, the correctness of their choices. But the most ambitious and, um, and big project we were involved in uh, took place in Rome. The ETT uh, team uh, won a call for tender for the Arapacis Museum in Rome, in which uh, uh, an, an immersive augmented reality experience was requested. The Arapacis is a huge marble altar in Rome that was um, ended and consecrated uh, in the nine before Christ uh, to celebrate the return of Augustus from Spain and Gaul and to celebrate the beginning of, the, of, of a long lasting period of, of peace. In fact, it's consecrated to the, to the Roman goddess of peace. And in this experience, uh, we, we are using uh, virtual reality hardware in a pass-through mode to deliver an, an immersive augmented reality experience. And uh, thanks to 3D, a really robust 3D object tracking provided by the Inglobe Technologies SDK, we are able to recognize the geometry of the, of the marble and actually project on it 
uh, augmented content. And uh, as you could see in the previous uh, slide, the archaeologists found that the altar was uh, previously uh, all painted with vivid colors. And so what we are doing here, we are using the original colors narratively to progressively highlight highlight areas of the of the bas relief to explain the the mythological scenes that are represented in the bas reliefs so this is a tv commercial that was aired in um, italian television and this is actually an example of what can be seen through the application as you can see you the user stares at the bas relief the bas relief is recognized and um, once once it's uh, correctly tracked, uh, an animation starts. And as you can see, the tracking is really, really robust. So the results are that the, this uh, installation was visited uh, by more than 10,000 people since its opening, uh, 10,721 to be correct. And uh, it's, it keeps being sold out. And uh, what is uh, the, the biggest success uh, is that I heard people uh, getting out from the museum speaking about the art that they saw, the, the mythology that they, that they learned about, and not about the technology. And that's it's a really big success. You don't want technology to distract uh, from, the, from the encounter with such beauty, but you want to create engagement, and you want the public to, to better understand what they saw, uh, to be able to share it better with other people, because they simply understood it better. And I think this defines uh, the term valorization of cultural heritage. Thank you very much.